But Eric, uh, give me your response to that. Yeah, yeah. look, uh, allow me to correct Adam, and Adam knows this full well. Uh, our head of state is the Governor General of Australia. He is an Australian, uh, in Australia, full-time job. King Charles happens to be our sovereign. Now, Gough Whitlam himself agreed that the Governor General is Australia's head of state. So it is, astounds me that the Australian Republican movement cannot accept that which Andrew Inglis Clark said when he helped write the Australian Constitution, that the Governor-General's powers don't come from the monarch, but in fact from the Constitution is voted for by the Australian people. Uh, 88 years later, Gough Whitlam himself said that that was the correct interpretation and the Governor-General is our head of state. And so why the Republican movement cannot grasp and accept that which is legal fact, which even Gough Whitlam acknowledges, shows the paucity of the Republican argument because they have to create falsehoods to try to give some credibility to their campaign. Uh, our head of state is very clearly the Governor-General, and that's a full-time job appointed by an Australian Prime Minister and then rubber-stamped by the Sovereign, but the Governor-General yeah. is our Let, state. Uh, Eric, I, I don't want to run out of time before we get to talk about your calls today for the Assistant Minister for the Republic, Matt Thistlethwaite, who we did invite on the show but was unavailable. You've called for the Government to abolish his position. Why are you doing that? Well, it seems somewhat incongruous that somebody that has sworn allegiance to the constitutional monarchy is then uh, committed to its abolition. Second, the Prime Minister will undoubtedly be at every single photo opportunity uh, seeking uh, to bask in the reflected glory of King Charles III, yet behind the scenes he's got a taxpayer-funded assistant minister costing the Australian people, I reckon, at least half a million dollars a year, $500,000, to yeah. propagate something that the Australian people have clearly shown that they do not I, want. I suspect Adam might have a different view on that, but I also want to ask Adam if he thinks it's the right time to have another referendum given the result of The Voice. We've got probably a minute or less, Adam, but uh, do you think it's Look. time? Com completely separate issues. It's time for Australia to ask if in 2024 we should have a King Charles of Australia who doesn't consider it to be a full-time job, a head of state who doesn't even reside in this state, a head of state whose loyalty is not to this state first and foremost. Three simple criteria to be Australia's head of state. One, you should be from Australia. Two, it should be a full-time job. Three, you should be unquestioningly loyal to that country. King Charles of Australia satisfies zero of those three. It's time for Australia to start having a mature conversation about whether in 2024 we want to be one of 15 countries in the world with King Charles as our king. Wonderful gentleman. I mean no disrespect to him. In 2024, that's just not where Australia's at. Well, I think we're ready to have the referendum tomorrow now that we've heard both sides of this tonight. Very quickly, thank you, Eric, and uh, Adam Spencer as well.